My name is Liam Crilly. This is demo four, and we are going to be deploying our space application as an API. So let's dive straight into it. As a recap, first of all, we saw Libby and Timo deploy a space app and their internal API using Nginx units. Then we saw James put Nginx Plus as a reverse proxy in front of that app and enabling microcaching to speed up and scale out the overall deployment. And most recently, we just saw Daniel add the Nginx app protect WAF module on top of that Nginx Plus instance to provide some production grade internet facing security protection for the entire system. So we're in a pretty good place. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna step forward and we're gonna take that API that's integral to the app and we're actually going to publish that independently of the application itself so this for example would be we've got the app we've got the api and now we want to send and share that api data with any other consumers that want to come and pick it up and build other apps based on our highly accurate solar system data now we might be doing this just because we want to share that data far and wide or we might be doing it because we want to actually monetize that API and make, make value and actually provide some subscribers uh, who will pay us money for this data set that we are maintaining. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to use NGX controller. So we're introducing a new component to this system. It is a full lifecycle API management solution, and it allows me to define an API, publish an API, manage the versions, all that lifecycle management and policies around APIs. But it does that by managing, controlling, configuring Nginx Plus as an API gateway. So that's what we're going to drill into right now. And what we've got, just to set the scene before we dive into the demo part, is we've got our space app, right? And it's got web application, front end that we've seen, and it's got an API that helps serve data for that application. So we've got clients, web browsers coming in and hitting the nginx.space web app and the web app itself then makes an API call. What we're going to do is we're going to open up api.nginx.space to external clients and they can come and get that API directly. So as I said, this is going to be using nginx controller for API management. And what I'm going to do is define an API and publish it. And when we publish an API and controller, we're doing two things. First of all, we're publishing a configuration for reverse proxy and runtime policy onto Nginx Plus as an API gateway. Secondly, and simultaneously, we're also publishing this API onto our developer portal so that it is discoverable, that consumers and developers can come and see what APIs we have and look at the reference documentation about those APIs. So that's what we're going to go through. And to make this demo fit in the allotted time, I'm also going to be using uh, an existing uh, specification that we've got for the API. So I'm going to be using Swagger or actually OpenAPI specification three for defining that API that we've got. So our developers, Timo was good enough to uh, also write a spec for the API. So I'm going to take that and we're going to use that to help us publish it. All right, let's get on with the demo. And before we do that, here's just a, a preview of that open API spec that I was talking about. So we're gonna be able to specify uh, the URIs that are in there and the methods and the, the description. And we'll see what happens to this spec as we go along. Into the demo then, let me switch gears. And I'm gonna start off by logging into controller. So, Let's do that. And this is a pretty fresh uh, out of the box system. We don't have a lot going on. I'm gonna try and run through this demo, uh, this, uh, the publishing process from start to finish in one hit. So as you can see, a very clean system. You can actually probably see where it came up just a few hours ago, but we're less interested in this overview and analytics, and we're more interested in the services, the apps that we're gonna be publishing. So, Controller has a, an app-centric view of the world. Everything belongs to an application, and that gives us great insights over uh, analytics. But it also means that when publishing APIs, 
they belong to something. They're, they're not just these abstract standalone entities. And so I've pre-prepared a space app, uh, but it is just an empty container. There are no published APIs in here right now or any other components. So I do, however, have a couple of gateways ready and uh, I don't have any APIs. So let's take that API and we'll create an API definition and we can call it uh, yeah, planets space. And this is where I can just import an open API spec uh, from a file. So if I uh, flip to uh, my spec, I picked up directly from Timo. Here it is. Uh, it's got all the uh, URIs, the endpoints, and the methods that are that are allowed. So I can just grab that and uh, paste it straight in, and we'll start pulling out of that of that spec uh, the information about the API. But I'm not going to do that. This is uh, a demo, and uh, doing everything in the user interface is a bit boring. So let's instead think a little bit more like I'm automating an API deployment. So what I'm going to do just to kick us off anyway, is that I'm going to use the API for controller. So forgive me if this gets a bit meta around APIs to import that API spec and then I'll pick it up from there. So the first thing I need to do uh, is log into the API and get myself a session. So I'm going to use my uh, HTTP client uh, and I'll create a session called demo, uh, but it's, uh, as you may have noticed on a, uh, it's on an IP address. So let's not do a TLS verification. And I'm going to uh, quickly uh, log in. Uh, V1 platform login, and I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to pass my credentials without showing them to everyone uh, by picking them out of a file. And that didn't uh, work because I probably typed something wrong. So let's just see if that works if I copy and paste and uh, don't try and be quite as fancy. Yes, some typo. Right, so I'm logged in uh, and now I've got that uh, planets, what did I call it? Space planets API. So there's that YAML file right? uh, I just showed you in VS Code. Let's, um, let's send that in. So now uh, let me do uh, let me minimize my typing. Uh, right, so we're gonna uh, put that uh, to a slightly different URI. So this is gonna be part of our services. Uh, there's an API definition incoming. I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Uh, let's call it space, uh, space planets. I think I spotted a typo. And let's also give it uh, a version because uh, chances are in a couple of weeks, Timo will want to fix something and we'll have a new version. And who knows, maybe there'll be another planet and we'll have a version for that break and change. Uh, versions 1.0.0. And let's import that from the uh, space planets YAML file. And that didn't work either because. Uh, API definition should be plural. Uh, ah, nearly. Uh, it, our API assumes JSON, so uh, let's um, be explicit that this is. You actually have two A's in planets. That might. Thank be you. Problem. Anyone else spotting typos? Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, but I think this should finally do the trick. Bingo. Okay, so we've pulled that in and it sent us back the, uh, the state of that API definition. And there it is. So we had no APIs and now we do. Here's the Space Planets API. And I could go in and edit that, but it just picked everything up out of the spec. I think I'll uh, de-risk the rest of this demo and just keep it in the user interface. So let's go ahead and publish it. And I wanted to just draw a distinction between having an API definition from publishing an API. And we de decouple those two things completely because, hey, you might have an API and you publish it more than one place. You might publish it internally without authentication, externally with authentication. It's the same API. 
if you want to see all the analytics about your API, it's good to have just one canonical reference to it. So let's publish it now. And we'll publish that version that we've got. And we will be, uh, let's call it uh, planets prod. And now we get to basically stitch everything together. So this system might be used by multiple teams for multiple types of APIs or other applications in multiple environments. So I'm gonna plumb this all together on my production environment in my space app, which was empty, and on my production API gateways. So what's happening here is this is a logical gateway and it may have one or more Nginx instances running as API gateways. And that means that the API owner that's publishing this API doesn't have to worry about where the infrastructure is. That can be pre-deployed, the API gateways are where they are, and I can add APIs on there without uh, impacting other teams who are also deploying APIs or fighting over the configuration for an Nginx instance. The other thing I'm gonna do is publish this API to the dev portal, as I mentioned earlier. And now we're just one step away. So we need to define the routing. So here are all the endpoints that we've picked out of the spec. Where are they actually gonna get proxied to? And this is straightforward because they're gonna get proxied to the uh, Docker image that unit is running the API on. So uh, this will we'll call it planets unit. And uh, let's do a few other things. Let's send JSON errors, not HTML. This is an API after all. And um, let's turn on logging. And now let's say, hey, this is a, a Docker unit backend is on, I tell you what, let's try and get this one right by uh, pasting that in instead, right? So that's the internal Docker IP and the port number that internally the API is exposed on. Uh, all right, so let's submit that and we've just published the API. Hey, Liam, I have a question. Go ahead, Jason. If, um, while you're doing that routing there, can I do any advanced policy-based routing? So um, if I've got my API spread across the world and I want you to go to the closest backend regionally to you, can I do that sort of logic as well? Uh, you can. That uh, I don't want to give away the next demo though. So oh. I would say stay tuned and uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll build on that. Okay, perfect. Uh, and thanks for the question, because hopefully now everything's been published and it's working. So I'm going to switch hats here from the API owner who published the API. And now I'm going to be a developer. I want to try and consume the API. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to hit up the developer portal. Uh, so I published that on dev.nginx.space and I published the API. I said I wanted it to go on the portal. So the portal's here. Here's the space app and I can look at the docs for that app. There's my Planets API I just published with some descriptions that came out of that open API spec. And here are the, uh, the API. Now, it looks like we're missing some endpoints, which is interesting. So I'm going to double check that uh, that did indeed get published by editing, going to the routing. And you know what? I forgot to drag anything over. So uh, just to prove this is a live demo, let's uh, do it right this time, Liam. So let's, and we don't have to route everything. So I'm gonna leave off the search endpoint because I'm gonna, so Timo hasn't finished with that. It's actually buggy. I don't want people to actually see it. So now I'm gonna submit that and I'm gonna go back to the portal and I'm gonna, if you weren't sure if this was a live demo, it's a live demo. And now the endpoints that I just published are showing. Uh, and you'll notice that the search URI is not listed. So, okay, let's make a, let's go make an API call. So let's see the API planets URI. And you see that we're combining, when Timo wrote the spec, he didn't know what URI, what host name we we're gonna be publishing this on. He didn't know if it was gonna be published using TLS or not, it is. Uh, and so what the controller is doing is it's joining together the production policy with the spec that we chose to publish which means I can grab that URI and it is gonna work. So if I use my HTTP client again to that endpoint, hey, there's my list of planets and um, hey, we've got Pluto, so I'm gonna run with it. 
So we published an API, but it's exposing all that data unconstrained out to the internet. And that's probably not what we're trying to achieve. So let's apply some constraints and some policies and some security on top. I'm gonna go back to controller, back as an API owner, and we'll go back into this uh, API version that's published. And notice that we didn't apply any security settings here. So let's change that. I'm gonna edit the component that's running the unit. I'm gonna say like this, add authentication. And I've got an identity provider that's predefined. It requires a, 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 a it, it issuing uh, JSON web tokens, and I've got a job ready that I can I can send in. So that's my external identity provider. Uh, I get to choose. Let's have tokens sent as an HTTP header uh, of called token. All right. Let's also add some rate limiting. So, and I want to do rate limiting. The simple way would be to do it by IP address. But as we're authenticating the clients that come in, we can actually be more, you, you can choose that unique client ID out of the token and we'll use that instead. And let's have a very meager uh, one request a second so that I can uh, show that working. You get to choose what happens if we exceed the rate limit. So we can hold and throttle requests back or we can just say, no, you're going too fast. Send back a, an, an error code 429 in this case. So now let's go ahead and publish that. And if I now flip back to my HTTP client and try and hit the API endpoint for Pluto again, uh, we are now unauthorized and we're asked to uh, use our external IDP to authenticate. So uh, I said that I wanted tokens uh, using the token request header. So let's do that. Uh, and now let me grab the token that I made earlier send it in and we get a successful response. So requests must be authenticated. Uh, but if I go like really fast and do three in a row, we're also gonna exceed the rate limit and we'll start getting a 49 response to say, hey, Liam, slow down. So what we've done there is take an API spec from the developer, put it through Enchant's controller and we uh, automated uh, that process by using the API to load in that API spec. And we published it and we made sure that it was suitable for external developers, both to discover and to consume and to do so safely. 